welcome back. Before the break, we were talking to our guest today, Mandy Young, an eco psychologist, about her researches, about her work back in Africa. She's based in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, Mandy, you have been researching, probably it's not yet complete, but you have been researching with dolphins. Uh, what can you share with us about your dolphin research and how much of you? Well, of course, we'll come to that later. Yes, yes. <laughs> your, your work with dolphins, how intelligent they are, how helpful they are to human beings. Yeah, uh, the experience of being with dolphins is just amazing. You have to actually, ex I, I couldn't really even ex describe it with words. It's something you have to How many experience. hours have you spent with them? Oh, many, many hours. I've been um, taking people to swim with the dolphins since 2005. Mm -hmm. So they have really good memories. So when you go back a couple they of recognize times, you? they recognize me. Some of the times when they do that, they do something which they call a circle swim. Mm -hmm. So they will, they will go round and you'll go round and it's, it's a way of interacting. And I work with somebody who has worked very ethically with the dolphins because a lot of people say, doesn't this impact on their behavior? Mm -hmm. But the way this particular person works with the dolphin, she has a very high code of conduct. So she'll always get in the water first, check what's happening with the dolphins and we'll only get in if they actually want to interact with us. So mm -hmm. we'll be in the water. If they choose to come to be with us, we have the most amazing experience with them. But bottlenose dolphins are very, very social. Mm -hmm. My particular role with people when they come to swim with the dolphins is after the experience. It's the same as when people are with the wild animals or right. tribal people. Right. I do a self-reflective facilitated discussion, which is fairly informal. Just get people to be a little bit quiet, get them to journal. What it is, they've seen, experienced, thought from the ex whatever they have just seen and experienced. And then we talk. So I try to get them through what they are, have experienced to get personal or professional insights. Mm -hmm. So I love, I love to tell the story about one particular group. Um, it was two couples, the, the ladies were pregnant and a friend of theirs. So there were five of them. And the so one I have a group, uh, a discussion before it actually starts, just preparing people for what's coming in the days ahead. And I noticed she was really quiet. So I said to you, you seem a little bit quiet, a little bit sad. She says, no, no, not really. Then she said, no, actually, you're right. It, I am a bit sad, but I don't feel like I can talk about it right now. Mm -hmm. so I said, fine. Anyway, when I go out there to be with the dolphins, um, I know this might sound a little bit crazy, but I'm pretty prayerful about it. I kind of, in my heart, communicate with the dolphins saying, look, we're coming into your space. Thank you for that. You know, we come with reverence. And we couldn't find the dolphins for quite a while. And then we're about to turn around and they, they arrived. And the two pregnant ladies got in. And the one lady was shorter and she carried quite full and the other mm -hmm. lady who was a bit sad was quite tall and she was slender yeah. and she didn't carry like she didn't, her stomach wasn't that protruded anyway the dolphins actually swum a mother and a calf two mothers mm -hmm. and two calves swam on either side of her for about 15 minutes and when she got back into the boat she just burst into tears she, i mean but tears of joy she was just exhilarated and in our group discussion later on, and I share this with her permission, um, she just said, you know, what was happening for me was that a couple of um, months, um, 69 months ago, I was actually pregnant and I miscarried. Mm -hmm. And I was really anxious this time that I was carrying so small that the same thing was going to happen. But, right. you know, when I was with the dolphins, I had this incredible reassurance from them that everything was okay inside. And the story carries on that the, the, the experience between us ended. But then about three months later, she was a good swimmer. They were at Camps Bay and they saw the dolphins. So her and her partner mm. swam out to be yeah. with them. And she was, she came back before them, the sea there is freezing. And when she came back, she was in tears and he said, what's wrong? You're having such a great time. 
She says, no, I really feel the dolphins were communicating with me that something's not right. So they just grabbed their things, ran, got to a hospital, and they arrived there just minutes in time. She had um, a fat embolism, mm -hmm. and if it hadn't been dealt with, she would have miscarried again. So I was very fortunate to be at the christening of the first two the babies it's that amazing. were born. It's amazing. And it was an amazing experience. Um, and these two little boys, even though they live quite far from each other, as soon as they see each other, they're very connected. So it was a very powerful impact having this interaction with the dolphins. That was just one example. You know, there are many, many yeah, other situations. They're very, it's a very intimate experience. And I think because they have this amazing ability to scan you, it almost feels like you're being buzzed. You know, you come out like exhilarated. You know, you just, it's, it's, it's quite an amazingly powerful experience. They can read experience. your mind. They can read your mind. They're very intuitive. They, they can read your feelings. I yeah, think they yes. can really read but your feelings. But how do they communicate? And your body. Them? How do you know? feel that this, this dolphin uh, likes me? How do you, how can you make that out? Ah, they come very close. I mean, like this close, mm -hmm. eye to eye contact. Mm -hmm. They'll hang around. Mm -hmm. You know, when they, don't, when don't they, don't you feel they scared? I don't. <laughs> I think some people do, but then, you know, they'll often, uh, it'll often be a reflection that they're quite fearful within themselves mm -hmm. anyway. So the dolphins will highlight for them, you know, there's a lot in life that they're feeling fearful about. Um, but the dolphins wouldn't. That's why um, I work with somebody who'll get in the water before mm -hmm. we actually get in the water with the dolphins because. Sometimes there might be a lot of sexual behavior coming, going on with the bigger dolphins or chasing yeah. the smaller ones. Um, and, you know, they're not interested in interacting with people at that stage. They have an, a completely different yeah, they're agenda. They're in a different world. <laughs> exactly. So then, you know, it's not a wise thing to get right. in. If you right. do get in, then, well, you might get bumped. Yep. But normally they are very sensitive to where you are and they, will have, they won't ram into you or anything like that. But they, again, they're they, wild animals, you have to be respectful. Do they make noise? Do, they do. I mean, sometimes you can be in the water knowing that they're approaching because you've seen them coming. Yeah. And you put your face in the water and you can hear them before you actually see them. Really? And I've had an amazing experience with a little baby dolphin. Mother obviously trusted me because this little baby dolphin was just doing these like somersaults underneath me, but the squeals were just beautiful. But they have a whistle. They, each of them have an individual whistle where they would identify. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, like having it's, a name. It's not like dog whistle that you can. You need to communicate with them. No, no. Um, you know their whistles are their particular name. But other than that, they have um, a whole way of communicating, which travels very long distances. How the do water. they show their anger? They don't like somebody. Uh, two ways. They will um, Bump into slap the tail on the water mm -hmm. and they will do like this with their mouths. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, wow, wow. wow. So <laughs> that means uh, get away. There's a, I'm not happy to see you. Well, what yeah. makes them angry? Sometimes when I've been with the dolphins and there's been that kind of reaction, it's if we haven't been sensitive to them, but often it's been because they've had a bad experience with somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, people on their jet skis chase after them or a boat will come too fast in approaching them and, you know, they've just had a bad experience. Then. But the person I work with, they've got to know her. And because they really trust her, when we swim with her together with the dolphins, the dolphins are generally very trusting. So personally, I haven't ever experienced dolphins being angry, but I have, I have seen it and I have on, on video footage and I, I do know person, that's how they react. Yeah, how can a person who is depressed, uh, he's uh, down and he goes for a swim, uh, meet a dolphin? And, and how can he understand that, you know, the dolphin, with being with the dolphin, I can become happier? How can he feel? I think that's the thing with animals. You know, with us, we don't always operate on a deeper emotional, intuitive level. I think as soon as somebody gets you, they really get you. They really get, okay, you're happy, you're sad, you're embarrassed. 
there's that immediate connection that happens. And I think that's what happens with animals with higher intelligence, like dolphins, like elephants, like um, whales. But um, so when you're with the dolphins and you feel like this creature that doesn't need to re relate to you at all, chooses to come and be with you and be this close, mm -hmm. there's something special that happens that makes you think, I am lovable. And I think with depressed people, that feeling of they find it so hard to accept themselves, that to feel accepted by this being that doesn't even need to come anywhere near them, right. I think it's a suddenly this realization, I have value. I am are, dolphins, uh, you know. are dolphins uh, an endangered species? I think certain dolphins are endangered species, but I couldn't really very accurately answer that question, I'm afraid. Uh, what sort of uh, areas do they usually live or they, they're found? I think different dolphins live in different areas. Um, the bottlenose dolphins that I have spent time with are, they're called um, inland, bo in, inner coastal bottle nose dolphins. Mm -hmm. So they're more in the coastal waters, just waters. beyond, warm or cold, but just beyond the waves or in the waves. They mm -hmm. don't go very far out. But then in the same area, I have re interacted, not swam with, but seen spinner dolphins. And they seem to be a little bit further out, more offshore. Mm -hmm. So these bottlenose are more inshore, and the spinner dolphins are more offshore. Um, then they have humpback dolphins, yeah. and they seem to be in between that. Are you against the dolphins being used in, for entertainment? I am actually. Um, I've always asked the question whether uh, uh, wild dolphins in captivity have chosen to do that for some reason, or it was just their bad luck that they got caught. Yeah. Um, I just feel it's very sad to put a, a wild animal that swims many, many, many kilometers yeah. and has a whole social family interaction into a tiny little pool where it just goes round and round and round and round and for our entertainment. <laughs> uh, no, I don't like that. It's, it's, it's cruel. It feels cruel to me. It's like putting us in jail. <laughs> you know, that's not a good experience. Feed, feeding three times a day, but you know, you can't go out. Exactly. I have to say, though, that although I, I'm not pro that, many of the, the dolphins in captivity, the dolphin carers are genuinely like the animals, genuinely treat the animals very well. But still, I just feel they can, shouldn't can be they, in captivity. Can they be trained very easily? They're very intelligent. So, yes, I had... I, I love the story where there was a dolphin in captivity. It was actually in a oceanarium in aquarium in Port Elizabeth in mm -hmm. South Africa, and there was a researcher sitting on one side of the glass, and a mother and a calf on the other side. This calf was only about three months old, and the researcher was sitting and smoking, and the smoke was curling up the glass. And the little baby dolphin came, left its mother, came to the glass, watched this behavior, went back, came and had another look, went back. The third time, it went back, suckled from its mother, held that milk, came to the window and released the milk. <laughs> so it curled up the window. I just think that's amazing intelligence. Because that's great. That's great. Time, to, time for us to take another break. <laughs> okay. Okay, viewers, uh, it's about that uh, we took a break and then when we come back, we'll just definitely just continue with the same discussion. Thank you. Don't go away.